Live on Live today, I'm joined by ANC MP Tasneem Motara, um, who is here on a visit in Paris, and we're going to find out why. Uh, Tasneem is the political whip for Gauteng province in South Africa. Uh, that's a pretty big task to take on board at uh, someone in your early 30s. Uh, it's a big task. It's the most populous uh, province in South Africa. But first and foremost, uh, Tasneem, I'd like to ask you, what's brought you to Paris? Um, I'm, I've, thanks for having me. I am an invitee by the Department of International Relations uh, under the auspices of the French government to be a participant in the Young Leadership Programme. Um, uh, from my understanding, it's a program that has been running for quite a number of years where you invite um, young upcoming leaders in different um, sectors and aspects of their career professions um, to come and really study and learn from, from France. And is this a type of a forum? Is there an annual gathering of the, of the, the people, the participants in this, or is it an ongoing uh, online uh, event, if you will? Well, I think um, when I'm back in South Africa, I've been invited to attend um, a networking session of past South African uh, participants. So I would imagine that's the sort of thing that happens in other countries. You'd go back, meet people who have participated in the program. Um, yeah, so it's an ongoing networking session. Um, you build networks in France and back home as well. And of course, when you mention leadership, it's not just political leadership, yes. it's business leadership, it's entrepreneurship as well. Um, so that is somewhat your remit uh, in South Africa at the moment. Mm -hmm. What's the potential for the youth of today in South Africa, in your opinion? I think the potential is um, is great. Uh, my focus areas here for the past week has been around youth development in relation to the fourth and fifth industrial revolutions and how that's going to change the way um, citizens participate in government, in governance, um, democracies, um, how women's participation is going to increase how youth are going to um, really dictate the pace of how the world works as we go forward. So the potential for young people um, to dictate what happens going forward is there. Um, and the space and the time is really ripe now more than ever. Indeed, we have Cyril Ramaphosa, who has, uh, who has taken over the reins from Jacob Zuma, who was nine years as president mm -hmm. of uh, South Africa. How have Ramaphosa's uh, first few months uh, as president of South Africa gone, in your opinion? And the people that you reach out to, the youth uh, side of, uh, of South African society, how have they reacted to Ramaphosa's few months in their power? Well, um, he has taken over, yes. He's just passed just over 100 days in office. Um, so that's just over three months uh, um, of, of time in office. He's put together a strategy in terms of what he wants for the country going forward. Um, uh, we have a campaign running called Tumamina, which um, translated into English means send me. So it's really about galvanizing um, South African ordinary citizens to be able to lend a hand and um, give back to the country. So he's gone around to business, which is a key focus area of his, he comes out of business, um, investors, investment, and really a large sector of South African society that may have felt over time um, to be left out of uh, streamlined policy making um, on um, decision making in the country. Um, and our growing middle class, which does to a certain extent include South African, young South Africans. Um, you have young South Africans who have entered the job space, who are earners, um, salary earners, who own businesses. So we do have a large growing middle class, um, so to say. So he does appeal to them. Um, I think it's an interesting period where he's sort of going around galvanizing support um, for what he wants as everybody hands on deck, um, regardless of which side of the class, racial divide you come from. Um, South Africa is not a nation state. Uh, so we have different interests, um, different um, race groups. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a really complex, complex society to lead. I think he's doing quite well um, and wish him well, definitely. It's 100, just over 100 days, so it's early. Still um, early days. It's still early days. Uh, we're also preparing, soon to, Soon we'll be preparing for our national elections, which should be held next year uh, around this time. 
mm-hmm. well, um, criticism will be rising then. Sure. Well, I mean, it's obviously, you know, he's starting off trying to get a broad sweep with, as you said, galvanizing people uh, uh, on the ground from whatever social class or racial uh, mm-hmm. class they come from, if you will. Um, but however, within the ANC itself, it's a very fractured organization that he has taken over from Jacob Zuma. And indeed, we can talk about the ANC Youth League mm-hmm. uh, that has been vociferously, uh, well, I could say vocal <laughs> against, uh, against kind of the old guard of the ANC. Uh, so before he brings the youth of South Africa mm-hmm. together across the board, what about uh, the youth of uh, the ANC and the ANC itself as a party? How is he bringing them together? I think let's, um, maybe I can start with the Youth League itself. Um, the Youth League has seen its own um, power contestations. Um, it's a youth wing of a political party that's in power. Um, so its relationship with the ANC is um, is very tense, Um for many reasons. Uh, Part of the reasons could be around state power, around governance issues, um, around addressing young people's situations. Um, So there has to be a healthy tension between young people and old guard, definitely. But I think as we go um, even closer to elections, uh, that tension is going to rise. Um, Whether it's for the good of youth broadly or whether it's good for youth in the youth league, um, remains to be seen. How is he galvanizing so, um, the ANC? Mm. Um, the ANC has been polarized over some time now. Um, it's become a, 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 a really a reflection of South, South African society. So you have racial tensions even in the ANC. You have class tensions even in the ANC. And it's a reflection of what is happening in South African society. So I think... Um, if he if he he's not going to be able to do it alone. Sure. So he's got to um, galvanize his team that leads the ANC as a whole. Well, this is the other question. I mean, when you look at the ANC Youth League, I mean, it was the, from the ANC Youth League mm-hmm. that the EFF came from. That's where they were born and bred and moved on. And um, how is he going to counter the the force that is a real grassroots force that's on the rise through the economic freedom fighters? That remains a concern for us as the ANC. Um, I think. Let me say, if we agree on principal issues as uh, as multi party as a multi party democracy, uh, we should be able to advance um, the 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 interests of South Africans as a whole because we don't govern alone; we govern with other parties. So, if we can agree on principal issues, I think it's um, the EFF shouldn't be looked at as a threat. Um, but if we're going to disagree on real principal issues that bring South Africans together. Not only the EFF, even other opposition political parties will remain a threat. Um, so like the DA for the middle class, as one the could DA say. The DA for the middle class, um, the DA for what what really represents liberal South Africans. Sure. Um, you know, so so those opposition parties, you we may find it more difficult and sometimes impossible to work with um, because of what they stand for, what what they believe to be principles, as opposed to a party like the EFF, uh, which really, um, like you say, bears its ideology from the ANC. Um, so we're not too far off. What we may disagree on is the approach. And what about um, Jacob Zuma, the former president himself? I mean, he's still a powerful force in South African politics. Only a week ago, uh, we saw him in Durban coming out of a a corruption trial that has been, well, one of the many corruption trials, hundreds of corruption uh, allegations that uh, he's uh, facing or charges that he's facing. But he was out in Durban in KwaZulu-Natal, literally getting the accolades and the, the support of all of his people. He's still a power to be reckoned with, isn't he? He definitely is. I think any leader in the ANC um, has a constituency base um, that shouldn't be ignored. uh, um, And if we ignore the fact that um, Jacob Zuma, former president, was elected by a vast majority of ANC members, he does have a base of of support. And um, the management of how you bring that base of support back and to remain within the ANC becomes very critical. Um, Ignoring it uh, will be at our own peril as the ANC. Um, and possibly our own peril as a country. And is the just tell us and tell me and our listeners is the Encounter Freedom Party still a force to be uh, to be reckoned with? I think where they where they where they participate, mm. um, where they operate, they yeah. are. Yeah. So they still do have a following. Um, it is your very um, sort of 
really structured, institutionalized um, supporters that they do have. They do have a base. And like I say, they, they, they speak to a particular constituency, which does have a voice in South African politics, um, does have a voice in South African discourse. We're not going to disagree with them on principal issues. Um, so they are not, um, they are an opposition in their own right, um, but not one that we can't work with going forward. Now, talking of going forward, what in your opinion, let's say if there's a five-year plan ahead, what in your opinion is the most important issue to be dealt with in South Africa today, the most important issue? Currently, the biggest, um, not only talking point, but it is the biggest, single biggest issue in South Africa is the question of land distribution and the debate around what does land distribution really mean? Uh, does it mean you take and give to from those who have to the not have? It opens old wounds, Definitely. of course. Um, does it mean you return land that was um, dispossessed? Does it mean the state takes control of land for uh, for use um, by the state um, for for its citizens? So, understanding that land is not just about agriculture, it's not just about farming. It's on land um, that you have services, that you have um, space to to produce an economy, um, that is linked to your identity, really. Um, and without that and really answering the question, what does it mean? What does redistribution, um, you know, what does it really mean and what will it entail from the side of the state, um, from the side of landowners as such? Um, that's the single most uh, burning question in South Africa right now. And if South Africa cracks that nut, if they actually find, if you find the silver mm -hmm. bullet to actually resolve that problem, that could be a template, of course, for other countries around Africa to follow, because it is a it is a it is a continent wide issue. Most definitely, our I mean our our close neighbour Namibia is uh, facing the same issues now, and they gained independence and democracy before South Africa, it's still an ongoing issue. And um, we face the same problems as a result of the same type of history. So you're right, um, South Africa still maybe, regardless of the fact that we're the youngest um, democracy in Africa, we're still a powerhouse on the continent and in the region. So if we get it right, um, others can get it right. They'll hopefully they'll hopefully. follow suit. Yes, yes. Okay, Tasneem Motara, MP for... Benoni uh, constituency uh, in South Africa. My thanks for being on the program today. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you.